image seems to match personnel file. It didn't come through properly, though. Can you take a close-up? What we have here is a photo taken moments before disaster. Processing image. Condemn Criminal Origins is a fantastic demonstration of a title having a small scope with laser-like focus and execution. It has one of the best first-person combat systems around. Combat counters carry an incredible amount of weight in those hits. It has a very unsettling atmosphere that evokes dread in its approach to horror. I can't think of many Western titles that can match it on that front. It has great pacing with short bursts of relief before the dread makes its way back in, and it doesn't wear out its welcome. All these years later since its release in late 2005, it's still stands as one of the better horror titles around, one in which I consider a masterclass in horror. To note, I am playing the PC version of Condemned. If you do want to check it out, and I highly recommend you do so, take a look at the PC gaming wiki page beforehand. It'll help you get running smoothly on modern systems. Condemned Criminal Origins was released on November 22nd, 2005. What was so notable about this date? Well, Condemned was one of the launch titles for the Xbox 360. Looking at the launch lineup, I'd argue it's the title that's aged the best. Although I'm sure there's some poor sap out there who is playing this, was so engrossed in it, and then got a red ring of death on their 360. Condemned was developed by Monolith Productions. They've had a solid hand in regards to quality since the mid-90s. This is also the first title from the studio that I'm looking at on this channel. It certainly won't be the last. Monolith was busy at this time, just one month before they released Fear. To note, Fear was launched on PC first, with console releases being a year off. Condemned, on the other hand, launched first on the 360, with the Windows release in April 2006, six months later. The game was heavily influenced by horror films such as The Silence of the Lambs and Seven. Early in its development, it was known as The Dark. While the final release does have a number of these supernatural elements, the dark leaned more into it. Your character could make use of spells. The concept for Condemned was thought by Jace Hall, listed here as Jason Hall and Nathan Hendrickson. I'm sure you remember Jace Hall for his various videos in the late 2000s and early 2010s. For example, I Play WoW or The Jace Hall Show. I most associate him with getting choked out by John Carmack. Circling the neck, Getting a little bit of leverage here, and then squeezing like right that. And at that, that point, point, the smart, smart competitors, competitors will tap. tap. You know, just tap when you're, you know, when you don't want to. You know, just tap. Uh, are you okay? That was the, the tap part. Condemn features one of the best first-person combat systems. It's very different than, say, Dark Messiah, another combat system I hold in high regard. There you have a ton of options and what you could do. In Condemned, it's small in its scope, but has incredible execution. One reason it works so well is the weight behind the attacks, both from you and your enemies. So many games lack that oomph in regards to first-person combat like you're hitting them with styrofoam. Here, you could feel that weight as you slam something like a pipe or a signboard against your enemy. Uh, uh, oh, that fucking hurt. Oh. You could block at the right time for a parry. You could change your swing depending on what direction you hit as you swing. You can also kick. You'll grab various weapons from your surroundings. It's quick to see which weapons you may swap with will change in regards to stats. Some will have longer block intervals and faster hits while others will be slower but pack more of a punch. You could use the taser for some crowd control and take a weapon out of enemy hands. <laughs> Depending on how you take down your opponents, you'll have some options available for you for that finishing blow. And these just feel brutal. <laughs> I must commend how much weight these have as well. Combat situations are short bursts. The game shows a great level of restraint and doesn't throw a million enemies your way. Most of your time it'll be one-on-one -on -one fights, or maybe as many as three. And there is plenty of downtime in between encounters. Guns are also available, but in very limited supply. The only way to check your ammo is to hit a key to check how much you have left. Once it's out, it's out. Although you can use the gun to smack some enemies in the face. So, despite how simple and minimal combat is in Condemned, the sheer weight behind those strikes and its laser focus on these aspects leads to an incredibly satisfying system that few can compare to. Now, as great as these weapons are, you need quality enemies to make a combat system really shine, and Condemned delivers on this front. 
Our enemies here are a whole bunch of vagrants. The homeless, the squatters, they're all going crazy. Some come in packs, some are quicker but go down quickly, some are larger and pack more of a punch. But there's some fun ways to mess with groups, get them to go after each other. When you counter hit them, they may take a swing back. At this point, they might hit someone else, which leads to a chain of them fighting one another, which can be amusing to just sit back and watch. <laughs> Another monolith released around the same time frame, Fear, is well regarded to this day for its AI. Condemned seems to be overlooked, but it's no slouch either. The way enemies will move around the background, coming from different directions. It's not like they sneak up on you, you'll hear them. They don't always just make a straight beeline for you. Now there is also the movement, which takes a bit to get used to. It has the classic issue of sprinting for about 3 seconds before you're all puckered out. Movement over various services will also slow our character down. It does take a bit of time to get used to, but it's not a huge detriment by any stretch. You also can't jump. There are a few cases where I want to yell at Ethan to just jump so we can make our trip that much quicker. Overall, combat comes in a simple but focused package to create something that's brutal and blends so well with the rest of what the game is going for. Being an FBI agent, there are investigation elements of the game. It's not like LA Noir where we can pick up various objects to spin around. Once we get in range, the screen will change and notify us that's investigation time. Again, it's fairly simple, but helps piece together the plot and serves as exposition. A tool will come up, we do a bit of pixel hunting, and get the results back to the lab. In which case, we'll get some updates from our pal Rosa back at the bureau. Right-handed print, missing the right index finger. This matches what we got from the crime scene. I processed all the prints. And Thomas, the print you got from the tape recorder at the metro station isn't on this hand. These little bits serve as a good palate cleanser from combat. There is a great stretch near the end of the game where we're going around this house following the trails with our investigation tools. It builds such a great sense of dread. A point will come across enemies, so we'll have to make the switch before resuming. I do wish the game made more use of these kind of scenarios. This part had great tension in it, of following these trails, dreading of what was coming up while dealing with enemies. So now that we've covered the combat investigation, let's look into level design, the pacing, the ambience, and tying it all together with the atmosphere. In regards to atmosphere in games, Condemned is right up there with the best of them. This time frame in the industry, you had so many great ones, including another one of their works, Fear. Stalker and Vampire Bloodlines are great examples from around this time frame as well. It's a sum that is greater than its parts, a bit of a je ne sais quoi factor if you will. Part of this has to do with the stellar sound design. On a bit of a side tangent, it's a bummer that the industry at large moved away from the advancement of sound design and more into graphic fidelity. Granted, this is also due to Microsoft and changes to Windows with how they stopped playing nicely with EAX. However, you can emulate EAX, which I did for this game, which should add to that already stellar sound design. This is why you should always look at a game on PC Gaming Wiki first before playing to help you get the best experience, especially older titles. When I look at games I feel are truly atmospheric, it's always having some of the best sound design around. This title, Fear, Vampire Bloodlines, the first two Thief titles, Stalker. The background ambience is looping unsettling soundscapes. Nothing really in regards to swelling strings or those common tropes of horror music. On that note, the main menu music gives more of that investigation vibe to it, a stark contrast from the rest of the game, although it is still quite fitting. Condemned is much more about building dread than scaring you in short bursts. It takes a very restrained approach to horror. You know in most horror games you'll pick up a key item and you're like, okay, something bad's going to pop out now. But there's a number of cases in Condemned where that doesn't happen, and that really threw me for a loop. These levels that we work through really add to that dread. We're making our way through derelict offices, subway stations, maintenance areas, schools, houses, and the highlight of the game, an abandoned department store. Areas that we're familiar with in our daily lives. However, these are abandoned, full squatters, flickering lights, or no lights at all. 
Levels are a mostly linear affair. Plenty of junk will block our way. Now, most games junk blocking our way feels a bit cheap, but it blends into the world of Condemned. Of course, these long abandoned places will have piles of junk blocking most paths. There are other roadblocks along the way. A number of times we'll need a certain weapon to open doors, like an axe, shovel, or a crowbar. These essentially serve as our keys which we need to find. Putting all these factors together, Condemned has a dreadful atmosphere that few games can touch. It's wonderfully paced as well, giving us some downtime during investigation phases or talking with Rosa to give us a breather. Before we know it, we're back into that world full of dread. Now we're going to get into spoiler territory here. I'll briefly cover the plot and some of the game's highlights. It's mostly a game of cat and mouse with a serial killer, although it does fall apart at the end with bringing in more supernatural elements. This is something that would only get more wacky in the sequel. In Condemned, we're playing as SCU agent Ethan Thomas. He's voiced by Greg Grumberg. I most associate him with Matt Parkman in Heroes, a guy who is always getting knocked out. What starts off with investigating a crime scene, we end up running into a serial killer who gets the drop on us through cutscene incompetence. We're framed with the killing of two police officers that he carried out. Drop the weapon now! Be ready for death, Agent Thomas. It shall come visiting again. With that, we're on the run from the Bureau to get to the bottom of things. Luckily, we have Rosa on our side, a forensics investigator who believes in our innocence. She's the one we call and chat up with when we gather evidence. It's somewhat amusing how long the game goes before someone from the Bureau steps in to cut off access from Rosa. It pretty much happens at the tail end of the game. Your lab access is terminated as of now. Taxpayers wouldn't like you using resources when you're officially on suspension. Farrell, listen to me. Talk to Rosa. We're this close to getting the guy. I don't know what poor innocent schmuck you're chasing, but stop it now. It's too bad. They could have done this sooner to really dial up that tension. Talking with Rosa were moments of relief, knowing we had someone who had her back. Being out there on our own, trying to piece things together without her help could have added more to the game. We also get to spend some time with her face to face during the library section. Damn Rosa, you should be out there in the field. Look at her not even flinching from that taser. She puts big Lenny to shame. The game makes use of the loading screen in between levels for exposition. This gives us short text blurbs mentioning what's happening in Metro City. Shit is really hitting the fan here. Even if you've never played Condemn, you're probably aware of the mannequins. For good reason. The department store is the highlight of the game. There are mannequins on display everywhere. And then, one gets off from its display to grab a weapon. It's a very nonchalant introduction. There's no string swells, the game doesn't really draw our attention to it. It's not a jump scare. It's very much a oh shit moment. In regards to jump scares, I think there's about less than a handful. Of course, I started this video with the most known jump scare from the game. There's also this bit in the level with the stationary mannequins following us. That will really throw you for a loop. Throughout the game, Ethan will have these hallucinations, some of them like flashbacks of what others are doing. What's going on here? Well, Rosa, being the pro that she is, digs up some files that the Bureau has on Ethan, with some interesting insights. For starters, your bone and muscle densities are off the chart. You have a reputation for being tough, but who knew? You also have a hyperactive serotonergic system in the brain. What that means, I have no idea. And lastly, there's a chest x-ray that's been redacted. Redacted? Yeah, right where your esophagus and larynx are. There's something more going on here, and this also helps justify Ethan's behavior. There is Malcolm Van Horn, a friend of Ethan's father, who is a bit of a wild card here. He helps us out, but it's also pretty cryptic of what his part is in all of this. The second last level, the farmhouse, is another one of the game's highlights. I covered it earlier in the investigation section, following the tracks around the house with our investigation tools. When you find the path that leads to the basement, it's very much a oh no kind of moment. I really don't want to go down there. Sadly, the final stretch is where the quality takes a bit of a tumble. We have this really convoluted plan to get the drop on the serial killer by posing as one of his victims. Why not just hide and when he comes in, wallop him? The last level, by far the weakest, has us going after this strange creature who apparently is the source of everything that's been going on. The serial killer we've been after? He's not under his own control. Which is somewhat of a bummer. 
I wish they kept things more grounded and kept most of these supernatural elements out of it. And while I haven't played the sequel, I am well aware of how it dials up this factor to 11. This individual we face in their final encounter is much more graceful with his strikes, like a swordsman. Now I want to see Monolith take a crack at some medieval game or something involving swords. Or get cracking indie devs. With that out of the way, we talk with Rosa afterwards. There's more at play here, with mentions of a cult and Leyland's part and everything still being a bit of a wild card. Rosa, being loyal to the end, lets us know that she's wired. Then we end with this for a sequel hook. It's too bad that the game stumbles at the end, because everything up to it was quality. Not that the last level is a stinker, but does fall short of everything before it. I do wonder how different things would have played out had they kept these supernatural elements at bay. It does take away some agency from the serial killer. As well, if they brought up sooner, that's okay, but it's really brought up late into the fold. Now, I haven't played the sequel, and I do plan on covering it, so I am curious to see how things go off the rails. I am aware of its reputation in regards to its plot. To conclude, Condemned is a wonderful title that has aged like a fine wine. Its simple but weighty combat system blends incredibly well with its approach to horror, an approach that few have managed to reach since. While I feel overall the Japanese have a better grasp on what spooks me, Condemned is right up there. First person combat hasn't seen a lot of notable development for some years now. However, as of writing this, there are titles that are coming up that look to pull from Condemned in regards to its combat, one of them being Fallen Aces, a title from New Blood with a crime noir approach. The developers have mentioned taking influence from Condemned for its combat system. So if you haven't played Condemned at this point, hop to it. It's an incredibly well paced, concise horror title that hits on all cylinders with what it focuses on. Thanks everyone for watching. If you would like to support the channel further, please check out my Patreon. You'll get featured in the credits here, you'll get access to videos earlier, you'll get weekly updates of what I'm working on. Thanks for watching everyone. Boulder Punch out.